Hi, uh, welcome to this video on standard index form. Um, so today we're going to be having a look at putting numbers into standing index, standard index form and taking them from standard index form uh, into what we call normal numbers. Uh, if you'd like to pause the video and take down these two important notes, um, at um, 8 times 10 to the n um, and a little bit of notes on what a and n uh, represent as well as this, um, you might not be able to um, understand them right now, but by the end of the lesson you definitely will be able to. Alright, so assuming you've done that, let's continue. Uh, first thing though, um, to work with standard, in standard index form, you need to know how to work with powers of 10. If you're unsure of how to work with powers of 10, it's very important that uh, you perhaps go and find a video at Khan Academy, somewhere on YouTube, perhaps one of my other videos, and um, learn to multiply and divide by powers of 10, because that's what standard index form pretty much works around. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that you need to um, be sure of when you work in standard index form are the basic and advanced index rules. Again, Khan Academy, YouTube, one of my other videos, having a look at um, the basic and the advanced index rules. So what happens when you multiply indices with the same base, when you divide them, when you have an index raised to another power, that sort of thing. You need to know how to do those before we work with standard index form. Alright, so assuming you know those, um, I'm going to carry on. Right, so the first thing we look at are the powers of 10. So 10 to the power of 3 uh, is the same as 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. And if I do 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 0, um, we start to see that my numbers just, I'm basically dividing by 10 each time. So 10 to the negative 1, which you should know from your index rules, is simply 1 over 10. And 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 100, and 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 1,000. So this is where um, index form comes in. Now, the reason we actually work with index form is because in, in life, we actually don't deal with small numbers very often. Um, science, in particular, as a subject, deals with well, it deals with huge numbers. Um, for example, um, the number of atoms in the universe, um, the number of um, cells in the human body. Uh, these are vast, vast, vast numbers. Uh, and likewise, within the same within the same subject, you have incredibly small numbers. So, for example, um, the diameter of, of the nucleus, or, or the, sorry, the diameter of a proton, uh, could be an incredibly small number. And it's very difficult for us to. to to do that, I mean, for example, uh, the number of cells in the human body is something like uh, this number, and there are something like 12 zeros or 15 zeros after it. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, something like that, like 12 or 15 zeros, uh, the number of um, cells in the human body, and, and it, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, then you get numbers that you know, are almost made up. A Google, for example, is um, 1 to the power of 100, uh, no, not to the power of 10 to the power of 100, so it's one with a hundred zeros after it. And it's just these, these vast numbers that would be simply impossible for us to work with without using standard form. And what makes it so powerful is that I can turn these big numbers, if we took this number here, into actually quite a small one. All I do is I say, okay, well that's quite a big number, but if, if I break this down, let's say I had the number 120. And I'd say, well that number is actually, I could write that as, 12 times 10, or I could write that as 1.2 times 100, or I could write it as 0 0.12 times 1,000. There are different ways of me writing this. And what standard index form says is, all right, well, let's standardize this. Let's standardize it so that I'm going to write any number I can, or any number I, I care to name, so that I have a number here, A, times a power of 10. No, that's 10 to the power of something. So, okay, cool, so we're going to do it that way. But as you can see here, here I've got a number times the power of 10, a number times the power of 10, a number times the power of 10. So when standard index form comes in, it says, right, well, these are kind of index form. And by the way, I could rewrite 1,000 as 10 to the 3. I could rewrite 10 as 10 to the 1. And I could rewrite 100 as 10 to the 2, as you can clearly see here. Um, Standard index form said, right, well, these are all index form, but the standard way of writing it is so that my a value is bigger or equal to 1, but less than 10. Okay? So in this case, my a value, or my standard index form for writing 120 would be 1.2 times 
times 10 to the power of 2. Now, we don't normally do it with such an easy number, because 120 is actually easier to write. Um, if I had this number, for example, though, all right, let's say I'm going to write it here. Well, that will also be 1.2, because I'm going to put my decimal there. But obviously, it's not 1.2, so I need to almost compensate for this. So I need to move my decimal or multiply them, this 1.2 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I have to move it, hop my decimal, 19 times. All right? Now, I know the decimal doesn't move, um, that's mathematically inaccurate, it's actually the numbers that are moving. Um, they're each time getting 10 times bigger, and they're getting 10 times bigger 19 times. Okay, so let's um, formalize this a bit. Let's do some examples. Right, so if I would like to um, perhaps write the number 300,000 in standard form, or the number 67, 670,000, oh, let's make that a bit bigger, let's make that... Um, 6,570,000. Um, I'm going to write these in standard index form. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine putting my decimal there and putting my decimal there. So straight away I write in this one, I'm just going to go 3. And I have to think what I have to do to 3 to get back to 300,000. I'm going to have to times it by 10 to the something. In this case, I have to times it by 3 times 100,000 would get me 300,000, but I can't say times 100,000, I have to say times 10 to the what? And I always find it easier if I just go, alright, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the 5, that'll get my decimal back to where it should be. And obviously I'm getting bigger, so, right, just double check, yeah, 100,000, fine. This one's a little bit different in that instead of just putting a number down here, I'm going to put all of these numbers here. So I'm going to put 6.57. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, 6.57. And then I'm going to ask myself, well, what do I do to get back to the beginning here? So again, my decimal is there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. All right, so 6.57 times 10 to the 6. And I can double check this if I were to have 6. 0.57, and I were to simply times it by uh, 10, 6 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <coughs> All of these uh, zeros match up to the zeros there, and I get my number back again. <coughs> Alright, so that's all good and well. If, however, I were to go the other way, I were to go from uh, index form back into real numbers, so let's say I had <coughs> 2.5. Uh, times 10 to the 3, and I had uh, 9.123 times 10 to the, I don't know, 10 to the 5, something like that. Pretty easy to put back into um, normal numbers. This I'm just going to times by 10 three times, or times by 1,000. So I have 2.5, it's not 2.5, it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. And there's my answer. Now, I'm using the decimal hopping method. If you have another way of multiplying by 10, you use that one, please. Um, I hop the decimal because that's what it looks like is happening. Mathematically, of course, um, my decimal is there and my numbers are hopping, uh, are, are moving 10 times each time. They're moving one place value to the left and one place value to the left, and they're doing three times. Uh, it ends up looking like the decimal is hopping, but mathematically, of course, the numbers are. Each individual digit is getting bigger by a factor of 10. In this case, all these digits are going to get bigger by 10 factors of 10, uh, 10 factors of 10, 5 factors of 10. So I've got 9, 1, 2, 3, my decimal is there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then these guys go zeros. Okay, so there's my number getting bigger. Alright, so that is with really large numbers. But as you can see here, I haven't touched on negative. Uh, negative index form. A negative index form is used when my numbers are actually getting smaller. So, let's say I had a really small number, uh, something like 0 0.0003. Well, in standard index form, I know that the A value, the value in front there, 
has to be a number that is between 1 and 10. Right? It can be 1, it can't be equal to 10. So in this case, 3 is going to be my number. Now that means that the decimal is currently sitting there. But I have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces there. Now that's going to be times 10. If I'm going to say times 10 to the 4, that means that this is actually going to be getting bigger. But I don't want it to get bigger. I want it to get smaller. And as you can see, if I time something by a fraction, my number is going to get smaller. So I need to make sure that this is, represents a fraction. And we know from our index laws that negative indices mean 1 over, or the inverse, so they mean a fraction. So if I multiply this by negative 4, I'm going to make sure that my decimal, instead of hopping this way, is actually going to hop backwards, like that. <clears throat> if I do uh, another one, let's say uh, 0 0.045, and I want to write that in standard index form, uh, let's actually add a few more zeros here, make it a bit more exciting. Um, again here, I could just going to write 4, 5, put the decimal there, and then I check what I have to do. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is going to be times 10 to the minus 4. And the reason it's minus 4 is because I'm going that way. I am hopping my decimal that way. I want to get this number. I want to make it smaller. So 10 to the negative 4 will make um, my A value get smaller. All right. Um, likewise, if I want to go backwards, uh, so let's say I had a uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 5, and uh, let's say I had 9, uh, let's say 8.413 uh, times 10 to the minus 2, let's say something like that. And I wanted to get back to my normal numbers here. All I do, if I change over the lines, uh, all I do is simply write down the number 2, and I want to make it smaller. Okay, so the, comment, uh, the decimal is sitting there at the moment. So we've got 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and my decimal sits there, just like that. Okay, again, all I've done is I've put 2 there, and I've hopped it to the right this time. My number, my 2 is getting 10 times smaller, 10 times smaller, 10 times smaller, 5 lots of 10, 5 factors of 10 smaller. 8.413, I want to make that 2 factors of 10 smaller, so 100 times smaller. 1, oh sorry, that's came the wrong way. We go 1 and 2. So I go and I put my decimal there. So I end up at 0 0.08413. <clears throat> okay, so um, standard index form works with both large numbers and smaller numbers. Now, you won't only be asked to convert either to large or small numbers to and from decimal, uh, to and from standard index form, you'll also be asked to do calculations on standard form. So, for example, um, let's say we were given <coughs> this calculation, uh, 2 times 10 to the 3, uh, times by 3 times 10 to the 4. Okay, now I can use the commutative property of multiplication in that I can do multiplication in any order to actually solve this. That's what this refers to here. So if I have any number in standard index form times any other number in standard index form, all I do is I rearrange them. So I put 2 and 3 together, so 2 times 3, over here, so 2 times 3, there we are. And then I use my standard forms over here um, to actually um, solve this problem as well. So 10, times, uh, 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 4 is actually going to be 10 to the power of 7. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Okay, so um, i just underline where we got this from. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 10 to the power of 3 and 10 to the power of 4, if you remember from your um, index rules, all I do is I add the indices together. And then I just want to make sure at the end here that this is actually still in standard index form. Because sometimes if we do a problem, as you're going to see in a moment, I have to check and, and rebalance things. And let's do another one. Uh, let's do, um, yeah, let's do 7 times 10 to the 2 times by, I don't know, 3 times 10 um, to the 8. Something like that. So again, I'm going to rearrange 7 times 3 times by my standard index form parts times 10 to the 8. 
So 7 times 3 is 21, times 10, now to the power of 10. But this is an index form, and you get 2 out of 3 for that. But to get that third mark, I have to put this into standard index form. In other words, this A value here has to be between 1 and 10. So, in order to do that, I have to compensate. All I've done is I've moved my decimal there. Okay? So I have to make sure that that is compensated by being 2.1 uh, times 10 to the 11. Right? Because 2.1 is 10 times smaller than that. So I have to compensate by making that. 10 to the power of 11. This works the same with division. <clears throat> this works exactly the same with division. If we have 8 times 10 uh, to the 7 divided by 2 times 10 to the 5, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the 5 is 10 to the power of 2. And we're done. Okay? If you've got a question where you had an index raised to a power, for example, let's say 2 times 10 uh, to the 4, all squared, right? Then all I'd have to do here, well, let's just make it a bit, a bit more interesting and say I'm raising it to the power of 4, all right? So that would then be 2 to the power of 4 is 16. In this case here, all I do is I multiply them. So this is actually 16 times 10 to the 16, okay? And again, here I have to double check, is it in standard form? In this case, it's not. So this is going to have to be 1.6 times 10 to the 17. Okay, so that is indices raised to the index. There is a little catch right at the end uh, in that when I add indice, or when I add in standard index form, I have to make sure that um, the, I need the same powers of 10 at the end in order to actually be able to add or subtract. So in this case, in fact, let me do this in red, so you can see it's very important. Uh, let's say I had 2 times 10 uh, to the 4 plus 3 times 10 to the 5, and these are usually your A star style questions. I cannot add these because that is not the same as that. I can't add them. So I have to convert this. So I could make that 2 or something times 10 to the 5. If I could do that, then I could very happily add them together. Alright? So, 2 times two 10 to the 4 is 1 times 10 to the 5. Well, if that's got t uh, 10 times bigger, which it has, then this must get 10 times smaller to compensate. <clears throat> and then all I do is I do th a 0 0.2 plus 3, which gives me 3.2, and I do not add these. I do not add them. Alright? Because if you were to actually write out what this is, and um, that is going to be, what, 20,000, right, and this is going to be uh, 300,000, right, and if I add them together, I end up with 320,000, which is what this actually represents, okay, so you've got to be careful, you don't add your indices, um, your, your, sorry, your, um, your, your power of 10. We don't add them together. Um, just a note here, I just said n is an integer. You never have fractional indices when you're working with um, standard index form. All right, so that's it for standard index form. Please feel free to rewind and make sure that you've covered everything, taken as many notes as you can. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please, I can add them to the comment box and hopefully I'll get to them or someone else will answer them for you. Otherwise, have a look on YouTube or Khan Academy. There are plenty of videos out there to help you with your maths. All right, that's it for me. Cheers.